You know that I'm into natural hair. I think it's empowering to show my natural locks on TV and everywhere else. It's bold, it's beautiful, and I, I just have to say it defies gravity, which means that my hair is everything. Which is why I was pretty mad when I saw that the International Swimming Federation decided not to allow sole caps at the upcoming Olympic Games. These are swim caps designed for natural black hair, like me, like for people like me. They first banned the caps in part because they didn't fit, quote, the natural form of the head, which, like, sounds like scientific racism, honestly. They're now re reconsidering that decision. But time is running out to make the change because the Tokyo Games start one week from today. In fact, many of the athletes already are in Tokyo. And no surprise here, I wasn't the only one that was fired up over this. Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman of New Jersey wrote a letter to the International Swimming Federation this week to get them to make that change ASAP. She wrote that the decision was, quote, not only insulting, inconsiderate, and irrational, but consequently serves as a deterrent in participation for black swimmers. And joining me now is Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman of New Jersey. Thank you so much for taking the time out tonight. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. So what was your initial reaction when you heard about the decision to ban these swim caps? Like if I was going to the Olympics and I couldn't put a cap on my head because my afro was too big, I would be pretty, pretty mad about that. I first responded, this is another absurdity, totally unnecessary. And as a reflection of people who just don't have an appreciation of who we are and, and, and the range that we represent. And so I thought, you know, this is this is ridiculous. It makes no sense. And it young women wear their hair in so many different ways. They need to be able to protect it when they're swimming. And so what's wrong with this? Why would they have made that decision in the first place? And so, A, those who qualify for the Olympics, they shouldn't um, have to have, they shouldn't have to deal with this. But B, what about the little girls who are home? who are looking at Olympic swimmers thinking, oh, I could be that. Um, why should they think that they wouldn't qualify because they have this certain kind of hair and that hair doesn't fit into that quote unquote um, Olympic um, uh, uh, bathing cap uh, that fits so snugly on your head? There's like no scientific rationale for this. This, this cap doesn't, doesn't give you a faster movement or anything. It just protects your hair. Right, right. Right. And I think that certainly, you know, the International Olympic Committee, you know, we're talking about countries all over the world. I've, the Olympics is beautiful because of the diversity. And so it seems to me that you would want to be more inclusive, not less inclusive. What was the reaction from the International Swimming Federation? Have you heard anything back from them? Well, we understand that they're reevaluating uh, the, the decision that they made, but we have not heard anything. And you're absolutely right. We need to hear something because the Olympics is coming up in a week. And it just shouldn't, this just is such a minute issue, really, that you can't, you can't make the right decision regarding this. Um, the Olympics is a representation of the best athletes across the world. And a good portion of those are women of color who wear long braids, who wear bantu knots, who wear afros, you know, and who are also excellent swimmers. So come on, what are we talking about? Get over it. Get over it is right. Um, you are a sponsor of the Crown Act in Congress. So this is, this is your wheelhouse, this is your jam. How do you think this speaks to a larger issue for black people and, and black women in particular being told to change who they are to fit in? I know that I have done that in my life. I, I used to wear a straight weave. Everybody saw it yesterday in my old MSNBC clip, but now I'm embracing my natural hair because it's amazing. So I think that this is sort of an extension of the, of of the, the realization that we're dealing with discrimination um, on so many different levels that people hadn't even thought about it before. So the Crown Act is all, all about embracing the diversity that we represent, the beauty that we represent. And the fact that that beauty and that diversity has nothing to do with our performance 
our our ability to take on any kind of assignment, you know? So as I said before, come on, this world is big, it is brown, it is black, it is straight hair, it is curly hair, it is it is a range of things. Now look, the bathing suits that the Olympians wear today, nothing like the bathing suits they used to wear. The Olympics has had to update mm -hmm. its sort of attire on a whole bunch of other levels. What is the problem here? Just go do it. It's so, so true. It's so true. And I mean, even in the sport of gymnastics, which is one that I participated in, they've updated things a lot. I mean, the way that uh, the gymnasts wear their hair, they wear makeup, they wear nail polish. A lot of that was not allowed when I was younger uh, and a competitive gymnast. Um, I, I want to pivot a bit to voting rights because one of your colleagues, CBC chairwoman Joyce Beatty, got arrested for protesting voting rights yesterday. What was your reaction to that? And, and where do you see this fight as we sit here on the end of the week where the Texas legislators l literally fled the state to try and push the Senate to pass S1 and S4? So number one, I love Joyce Beatty and I respect her tremendously. She is my leader and she is courageous and she put herself out there standing up for what she believes in. I admire that, I respect it. And secondly, she said it and everyone needs to understand it. This is the beginning. This is not the end. We're not going to have our right to vote um, taken away from us. We're not going to have a disruption in that ability to cast that vote. And this is not going to be the end of the situation. You'll see more protests. You'll see more pushing back uh, on the states that are trying to do this. But the bottom line, the Senate needs to do what it has the capacity to do and vote for H.R. 1, and the House needs to finish its uh, introductory uh, investigation to do H.R. 4, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, pass it, send it to the Senate, and let us protect the right to vote. People have died for this right to vote. This is not something we should be experiencing in 2021. We talk about insulting, irrational, and unacceptable. That's what's happening with our voting rights. And, you know, God bless those um, Texans uh, representatives who came and are sacrificing their time, staying away from their family. God bless them for doing that. Right. But that's what people are going to do. They're going to do things that are necessary. And I think, you know, it's, it's necessary and good trouble as the late John Lewis uh, used to say. Representative Bonnie Watson-Coleman, thank you so much for taking the time out on this Friday night.